Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do masking and then how to use it in a little project that's gonna go into my weekly decoration this week. So if you wanna learn a little bit about masking, then just keep watching. So this is gonna be like a two part video. So the first part is gonna be this bit and the second part's gonna be in my weekly decoration. So I'm making something to go in there. Think of it as a flipper but it's a flipper in a different way. So it'll make sense when you see it on Sunday. So I'm gonna be using all lawn fawn stamps to decorate next week in my planner. And it's gonna be the most ambitious thing I've ever done, but that's okay. Um, but what I wanna do is make this little flipper thing with a little elf that pops out of these boxes. Now he's not actually gonna pop up. He's gonna be sort of stuck in there, but I need to make the pile of boxes and the little scene. So we're gonna do that in today's video. And this one's gonna have a lot to do with masking. So if you've ever wondered what masking is and how you do it, this is, this is the video that you're gonna learn all of that. So I'm grabbing these two little um, bits of the box and then I'm grabbing two acrylic blocks. And I'm grabbing two so that I can work with both of them at once and it saves me having to like take the stamp off and put the stamp back on again. So first thing we need to do is make our mask. So I'm gonna grab this is a piece of full adhesive uh, uh, adhesive note. So this, rather than having just the sticky on the top, it's got the sticky across the whole thing. So what we're gonna do is just grab our black ink and just very quickly, because it doesn't have to be a good impression because we're not doing anything with these. I'm just going to stamp these out. I'm then gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut them out. It's as simple as that, really not hard. And especially with um, images like these ones, like this box, it's really easy because there's no hard lines, there's no little bits to get stuck in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this out. Now you just need to make sure that you cut this right on the outside of the black line. You don't wanna cut it on the in the middle because then it won't mask off the entire space. So you just wanna make sure it's always on the very, very outside. And there we have our little mask pieces. So from there, what I've done is I've actually cut out a bunch of these because I've been practicing to make sure that I don't mess this up. So I've got a bunch of these all sitting here. What you need to do to work out the stack, is you need to put things, the, the thing you want in the front needs to go down first and then mask off, and then you build everything up around it. So in this case, I've got some Express It blending card here, and I'm using that because I'm gonna use some Copics to color these in. I'm gonna start off with the lid of the box, which I want to be open so that the little elf can jump out through it. So start off with this one, and I want it to sit, and I'm probably gonna use, put this in the wrong place on the cardboard and waste a little bit, but that's all right. All right, I've done this down around the wrong way. That's what I've worked out. So again, not gonna waste the cardboard because I don't need to, so I'm gonna flip it up this way. I need to put the box down first. This is my little me learning thing up the top there. I need to put the box down first so that then I can build the, put the lid behind it and then I can build it up. So, put the box down first. All that time practicing for nothing. And then we'll put the lid down behind it. So it sort of looks like it's, it's just hanging out behind the box. There we go. Now, it doesn't matter that I've missed a little bit, I can fill that in when I'm coloring in later. But I'm gonna grab another one of my little masks, because then I'm gonna build this up around it. And because I want this one to be at the front, it needs to stay masked up the whole time. So go back in with, this time we need the lid first, because I want, I want it to be on the box. looks a little bit messy now but I promise when it gets done it'll look fine. I might have to cut another mask but I'm not sure yet. So again we're going to put the lid down first because the lid's at the back. And I might be able to reuse the ones at the top because I don't need them there anymore. Yeah we might be okay here. So. start taking off all the masks I'm just gonna wipe the ink off my stamps and this is the part where you keep your fingers crossed that it's worked so I know the top one has worked because obviously I've got the 
mask off that already. And I always keep all my masks because I keep thinking that's a mask. Um, I always keep more because you can obviously use them later on. I'm just going to add one more in because it just, it just doesn't look quite right to me. So I'm just going to add one more down here. So I'm just going to mask off these two. I think I've messed this up, but what I'm going to do when I cut it out, because I'm going to cut this out by hand because obviously I don't have a die to actually cut this shape out, I'm just going to cut that one off and I'll fix it up when I do it. So I'm going to start cutting this one out and then actually no, we'll colour it first and then we'll cut it out. So I'm going to do this in a bunch of Copic colours and I'm going to speed through this because obviously like the colouring part's not the important part, um, but I'm going to put them all as in like their um, Christmas boxes, so there's going to be lots of different colours. The colours that I'm using with all my stamps that I've already done, which are for obviously for Sunday's video, um, are all reds, greens, and reds, blues, and yellows, and a little bit of green. Uh, so I'm going to keep that same colour combo going here so it all matches together. So I just drew some ribbon in there with some, it's a Unipin fine line, it's a uh, pigment ink so it doesn't react with the, with the Copics which is nice. And then I've just done, it's just a basic shading through most of that, nothing too fancy. It doesn't need to look awesome, it just needs to look good. Alright, so we're going to cut this one out. So like I said, we're going to do this with scissors and we're going to try and cut this bottom bit off. I'll just use a little bit of... Um, Oh, white gel pen to fix it if it is showing and I'm just going to leave a tinsy little kind of die cut look around the outside so it is still going to look like it has been die cut even though it hasn't and again because it is all straight lines it does make it a little bit easier it's not like there's any little corners to get stuck into when it all goes in together you sort of don't notice any of these inconsistencies anyway it's like with the the lines of the presence like of the ribbon they're not always straight and they're not always completely joining up and sometimes they're missing but hopefully everything else will kind of take away from the the fact that they're not quite perfect there we go there's our little pile of presents that's actually turned out really nicely and then I'm just going to grab my white gel pen I'm just going to fix those little couple of lines that I've dropped down. You'll never notice because they'll blend right in. Same thing anywhere I've gone without, like outside the lines. I'm going to tidy them up as well. It only happened once or twice. And then we've got our little pile of presents. And what we do need to make sure we do is cut the little um, square bit here where the elf is going to jump out. So I'm just doing that with a craft knife and I'm just doing it freehand. And I'm just following along that black line. And I'm just making sure obviously I stop just before the edge and then I can run my knife through there. And you see it's now got somewhere that something can pop up. So I'll give you a little sneak peek 
of one of the elves. He's in here somewhere. I've got them all hiding in here. You get the little elf. And you see she'll be in the little box and she can sit there and then I've got a bunch of other presents and die cuts that I can use to decorate this. So it's going to end up looking very, very cute. So we've done the actual masking piece. Yes, that's complicated. Yes, it takes some time, but I think what it looks like in the end is actually really super cute. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm gonna add some white gel pen details to this afterwards, but at least for now, we're just gonna put that off to the side. And I'm gonna bring in this little piece of cardboard that I'm gonna be using in my decoration. So I need the little fold up bit to be at the top. And we're gonna sort of build our scene on this piece of cardboard. So we're gonna sort of think of it, need to think of it as a room. Think of it as a room and that'll help you through this. So we're gonna start off with putting a background on here. I want, I want it to look like a house. So therefore I need to make it look like it's got wallpaper or paint and then a floor. So I'm gonna do the floor first. I'm just gonna grab in a piece of scrap paper it's going to mask this off again. So again, we're doing a different kind of masking now, but we're still using something as a mask. Could use washi for this as well. I just want to do the whole top bit so I don't accidentally kind of make a mess of this. And the only other thing I want to do before I keep going is just make sure that I've got this in the right spot. So I want this to sit off to the side. I want to sit this side because the actual elf I want to use is actually facing the other way. So we're going to have that sitting there so I want the floor to sit there. So it's going to not go over the floor because that doesn't make any sense. So I'm just making sure that's straight just using the, the line of my mat there. Then we're gonna grab, we're gonna grab pumice stone, which is a grey ink. So we're gonna think of it as like grey carpet, that's sort of where I'm going. And we'll grab a blending tool. I'm gonna use this one, just gonna make sure it doesn't have any. Uh, it has a little, it's alright. Can always test it. Mm, maybe it looks a little green. Just because it's got a bunch of ink still in there. That still looks great. Okay. I'll grab in one of these ones instead. Because I know this is clean. <laughs> Let's grab the ink on there. And I'm just going to ink. Ink up the... F oh, you would move, wouldn't you? Ink up the floor. Obviously I haven't got this stuck down to anything, which is why it's moving. So I'm just going to hold on to it and that should solve the problem. I know my arm's up in here now, but it'll be fine. And then I'm using sort of little circular motions because carpet's not flat, it does have a bit of movement to it. it. Doesn't look like much yet, but it will. There's the little grey, oh it looks a little bit light in that corner. Sometimes you just need to move your arm to get the Perfect. Here we go. So there's our carpet. And again, I'm just going to grab in my boxes just to make sure it's sitting in the right spot, which it still is, so that's good. So for the backing, I'm just going to do it as a really pale blue. And I'm going to do it as a pale blue because the other parts of the planner are going to be, a, other parts of the planner week are going to be a bit blue anyway. So this will all fit in together. This one I am going to use a brush. I do want it to be a much paler kind of finish and the ink sometimes gives you a little bit the ink blender can give you a bit much Just, I don't have any issues with that so I need to do the whole thing but I need to mask off obviously the, the bottom so I'm just grabbing just another piece of scrap I'm just going to stick that right on there so that it doesn't kind of wobble around. I'm actually going to stick this on the back so that it stays. Again, just making sure I don't have that in the wrong spot, which I think I do. Just put a bit there, a bit there just to hold it down. And I'm just going in with a really, really light. And I'm kind of still going to do it in that swirly kind of pattern. Mm, 
go. Got our little room going. And it is very pale and that's okay because we're going to use obviously everything else to really bring the colour and stuff back into this. So we're going to start off with that pile of presents. I'm going to put that sitting there. I'm sort of thinking if I want to put a Christmas tree down here because I do have a Christmas tree and a fireplace but I want to use them on the, the top of the other one but I'm thinking that fireplace might actually look really cute here. No, I'm going to leave it. Kind of going to get a sneak peek at the moment of all of my little bits and pieces that I've got. So I'm going to have this little box of presents sitting at the front which will make that look less like he was sort of nowhere. And then somewhere here. There was a little boy out there, he is, in the green. He's going to be jumping out. <laughs> He's going to be jumping out. And then I'm going to have Mrs. Claus here. And then I've got a bunch of toys, so they're going to sit sort of on top of. And then these are going to be scattered all over the rest of the... Um, the scene anyway. I'm going to leave this because I want to put a window and I'm not sure yet how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to leave that for um, leave that for later. So I'm going to start sticking this down. So we'll put this one first. So just grabbing normal glue tape. I'm going to stick the little elf in here first so that he's in the right spot. And I will have another elf upstairs. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here. Let's stick him back in again. Is one very large pile of presents. And then we'll put Mrs. Claus over here too. Put the little presents at the front. Put another little single present if you had one as well. Wouldn't be a bad thing to sort of pile it up there just so it's not all. And that's the wrong green, but otherwise I'd use that one. But then we can put some of these little toys. So we're going to grab the teddy bear, put the little drum kit down first. It's going to be down on the floor. I'm going to put the teddy bear and there's a little doll. I'm going to put her up here as well. Put the teddy bear sitting over here. And then the little doll is here somewhere. I'll be more organised for the next one. I'll have them all sitting out. I just didn't want to, I wasn't planning on using as many of these in this part of it as I am. So I kind of was thinking, well, I won't show you these bits yet, but oh well. I'm going to put the little doll here. Now I'm just noticing that some of my presents I haven't stuck down 100% so I'm just grabbing a little bit of glue pen and just sticking them down. Just put a little the acrylic block sitting there. The only other thing I'm going to put on here, I'm going to grab some of these Christmas lights because I've got a bunch of these that I've pre-cut out have them sitting up the top here sort of on the corners and then like I said I'll, I'll look at doing a window I have an idea for the window so I'm just going to use the glue pen for these because they are a little bit intricate this would be really cute for a pop up as well could have the elf actually popping up out of. Obviously I've done done enough here with this one today. I don't want to go over the top. When you see it all put together, you'll know why I'm not doing a pop-up because it's just going to be far too over the top. So I think, I think that's it for this little card. Like I said, you could use this as a card. Like you could use the same kind of techniques to make the, the pile of presents as a as an actual card and then you can put like the sentiment in the middle here that would actually look really cute uh, so you can keep that in mind as well but that is the the start at least of my weekly decoration using the um, using all my lawn fawn stamps like I said it's an overly ambitious week so I cannot wait for you guys to see it but this is at least the start of it so I hope you've enjoyed it and you've taken something out of the techniques of how to mask stamps off I do think that came out really really well it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but I think it still has the effect I'm looking for, which is exactly the point. So 
So I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to come back on Sunday to see this be used in the final product. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic, fantastic rest of your day and I will see you again in that video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.